I'm here with, what's your name? What's what? What's my name? Yes. Norman. Okay, I'm here with Norman. I'm Haas. So what do you know about veganism? What, what does a vegan mean to you? Well, it means a, a, uh, it means a certain diet. You carry out a certain diet, and the diet is, um, uh, excludes uh, any kind of dairy uh, and any kind of, um, of meat, um, including um, chicken or fish. Um, meat in, a, in, a, in its broad sense, plus um, plus dairy, including um, eggs and milk, and I suppose yogurt too. I don't know. Uh, so that's so. If you're a vegan, you carry you pretty much carry on that kind of a diet. Yeah. So I think you have the diet thing down in terms of understanding how a person who's vegan would be affected by their decision to go vegan dietarily. Do you know how else a person might be affected if, if somebody goes vegan? What other things in their life would they have to be mindful of? If they say, I'm vegan now, and they want to call themselves vegan, what would, how would it kind of affect their lives in terms of the other, the other things in life, peripheral to the diet? Well, there's probably a number of things, uh, not just one or two. Uh, if, you're, if you are a vegan, uh, and also vegetarian, but let's say vegan. Uh, vegetarian being, um, you can you can have dairy and um, and uh, eggs, uh, pretty much. Uh, but uh, in either in either case, you're you you might be interested in being kind to animals. Yeah, I think you nailed it right there. It's it's all about being kind to animals. And it's not like you have to be an animal lover per se. That like, You don't have to go and visit animals in farms and that kind of thing in order to be vegan. It's actually a non-action. Do you understand what I mean by that? So it's about something that you don't do. So it doesn't obligate you to actually do anything. It's just a matter of what you decide to stop doing. Yeah. That, that makes it. It's also, it's also probably depending upon one's motivation, it's good for the environment uh, because of the of the energy that's used to uh, produce the food, uh, the feed for the animals, and uh, so I think you're you're going to be uh, doing something good for the environment. Uh, whether whether or not it's good for your health, I'm not that I'm I'm not convinced that it necessarily is good for your health but it could be yeah and and you know three areas that i i can i i can think of yes so veganism it pertains to your diet of course it also pertains to how you use animals in other ways so if you support rodeos and like circuses that use animals that's of course not a vegan thing to do i guess also it's important that how you see animals as whether they're beings that are here to serve us or whether they're beings that are here with us like, are they here for us or are they here with us? That's an interesting uh, metaphor. Yeah. That's an interesting comparison. Yeah, I don't think they're here for it. They're here for... They're, 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 they're no more here for us than we are for them. Maybe. There's yeah. another way of putting it. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And like when you see these things, like this is the dairy industry, for example. Do you know about how in the dairy industry the... Mother cows have to be impregnated first. So it, they're not mating and reproducing in the natural sense. They're being forcibly impregnated. So that, that cow, those cows are referred to as downers. When their milk production declines and they're no longer profitable to the dairy industry, then they're slaughtered. I've had trouble um I, I'm trying to become a vegetarian. Actually, uh, I don't. I don't. My wife is um, isn't interested in it, so therefore that's an that's an issue. I don't want to burden uh, have two meal two different kinds of meals all the time. So that's that becomes a a bar uh, a barrier that I, I don't know quite know how to overcome. Uh, but um, uh, but veg but I I. If you're kind to the if you're kind to the cows and you're kind to the chickens and they produce milk and eggs along the way, I, I uh, so long as they're being 
maintained kindly, I'm not really sure what the mischief is if you, and that's why vegetarianism appeals to me. I, I don't, and I, and I like, and it gives me a, a guaranteed source of protein without having to worry about it. And I also happen to like eggs and milk. I drink, I'm a milk drinker, uh, uh, skim milk. Um, so, but I, but I know vegan, that's for, all that's forbidden, I know. Uh, Why do you think that those things are forbidden in veganism? Like what, are, are vegans just people who don't like the taste of eggs and cheese, etc., or do vegans have more of a reason? Is there more to it? Probably along the lines that I, that I talked about for myself being a vegetarian, uh, is that you're kind, you do it because you want to be kind to the animals. It's good for the environment, and we, and it's and it's and it, and it may be good for your health. So those would be. I, maybe there's some other reasons. I don't know. So you had mentioned that veganism is most likely going to have health benefits. The things that you can be a very unhealthy vegan. You can eat like chips all day and be vegan, right? You can eat chips and drink pop all day and be vegan. Um, of course, that wouldn't be healthy, but it would still be under the realm of a plant-based diet because you wouldn't be consuming anything from animals in, in doing so. A big part of being vegan is, again, how we see other animals. So we don't want to see other animals as commodities, as kind of units of production, which is how companies who produce things like meat, eggs, and dairy are viewing them. Would you agree that they are viewing them as products, like as means to an end? Like, yeah. I do. Yeah, and, and veganism is actually a means to an end also. Veganism isn't an end in, it, in and of itself where you say, okay, I'm vegan now. It's a means, like it's a means toward leaving behind this expectation or view of animals that they're going to be here to, for us to use, like to exploit and to commodify. So when we think about exploitation, like what comes to mind when you, when you think of the word exploitation? Taking advantage of. Do you think that it's fair to say that like cows in the dairy industry are being taken advantage of or exploited? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how do we justify it then? That's why. That's why I've, I've attempted to become a vegetarian. Uh, but vegetarians are still enslaving these animals. To, to, to justify, I suppose if if um, if you eliminated the uh, eliminated some of those um, uh, abuses. Or all the abuses, uh, the 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 impregnation, the forced impregnation, and you just didn't do that, and you and you and you maintain the cows out in the pastures all the time, and you milked them kindly, and you didn't keep the chickens in the cages, and you let them out on the pa out on the grounds, and then they, um, and, uh, hypothetically, if that were if everybody did that. Is that would you say that you're you're being kind to, kind to animals then even if you even if you eat their eggs and drink their milk? I would say that you're still viewing them as a resource. I think that it's important to remember that these chickens have been selectively bred to produce way more eggs than they would naturally. Even the word I use, like produce, right? It's like we all have these words ingrained in us, but why should we see them as beings that are that are a producer? A, a producer. Exactly, because that's their that's their menstrual cycle. That's their period. When they ovulate, they let the egg go. That's like um, an ovum, basically. And with with cows, for example, the industry separates the mother and the baby when the when the baby's first born, so the baby doesn't have a chance to be with their mom. And the mothers often cry out for days for their babies um, after they're after they're kidnapped, essentially. Yeah. I they're taking the kids away from the mothers and fathers. Right, and how else can the, milk, can the milk be consumed by humans, right? It's like that milk was intended for that baby. Every drop that a human consumes is a drop that that animal wasn't able to consume. Oh. Do you think that, is that true? That's, that's, an, that's an interesting point. It brings us just back to the idea of kind of like viewing animals as, as commodities, basically like it, being able to enslave them and to do with them as we choose. Our main goal here is for people to just stop using animals in all forms because 
it's our belief that animals cannot be used in a non-abusive way. We believe that we should be concerned with their interests, and we believe that it's their interest to not be used. So we want people to know that there is an alternative. It's not necessary to use animals. I believe, I believe, I believe you can maintain a, 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 a you, you can consume sufficient protein without, uh, without uh, eating animals. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting is that all protein actually originates in plants. We think that that meat has protein, but it's not the, not the originating source of the protein. It's a condensed form of protein that has been built up by plants in nature. Like lentils and... Uh... Well, what's interesting is that, so we're growing plants, we're feeding plants to animals, and then we're eating those animals instead of consuming the plants directly. So we can just cut out the, the middle animal, right? You you uh, you apparently uh, you're doing independent study. Are you in you in college? No, I I'm I'm post doctorates and everything like that. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm I'm flattered though. I'm I'm in my mid thirties. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate your stopping by. Not in an unkind way, but you don't have a lot of sympathy for for vegetarians. Well, I think that vegetarians are a lot closer to meat eaters than, than vegans because the only thing that vegetarians do is they omit flesh from their diets, but they don't reject any other type of commodification or use of animals. So vegetarianism, unfortunately, is strictly a diet. It's just like a diet where you eliminate one thing that you are consuming, but it doesn't address the issue of animal abuse and cruelty and exploitation. The main thing I'd like for you to remember is that the only way to legitimately oppose animal abuse is to be vegan because in any other case you are contributing intentionally to unnecessary exploitation or cruelty and violence basically. I, I, I buy that. I, uh, That's great. I, I, find, I find that I, I'll have accomplished something if I actually um, become a complete vegetarian. Right now, I don't eat. I, if I, if I had my way, I wouldn't eat any chicken. Uh, in fact, I, when I go to a restaurant, I, the only the only thing I eat of of, of a flesh nature is is, is fish. I, I don't eat beef. I don't eat I don't eat chicken. I don't eat lamb. Um, just uh, I'll order I'll, I'll order fish. Um, it'd be it'd be ideal if uh, if, if uh, my wife would also do it that way. To become a vegan, I mean, this is, this is terrible. Yeah, and you know, it seems so daunting at first to people to imagine going vegan. And I would be willing to bet that many vegans, if not most, have said in the past before going vegan that they would never go vegan. And I used to mock vegans. I, I, I was the person who would go by a circus where vegans were protesting and I would say, you know, I love the circus and that kind of thing. But the circus, that goes without saying. I mean, that's, I never go to, I taught my kids, uh, we never took our kids to circuses. I would implore you to kind of dive a little bit deeper into why the circus is so abhorrent to you. And I would say it's, it's probably it's because it's, you're exploiting the animals. it's, yeah, you're exploiting the animals. Um, and it's also unnecessary, right? Oh yeah. You're using, you're using the animals for your own entertainment. I, I, yeah. Yeah, and entertainment is a form of pleasure, right? It's like essentially, it's get it's getting pleasure. You get pleasure uh, in other ways, so. Yeah, we can get pleasure in other ways. And that's how we feel about things like dairy and eggs and cheese and that kind of thing. Because we believe that people are eating them just for taste. And taste is a form of pleasure. So it's kind of dark, but imagine if somebody really liked how it sounded when they killed an animal or when a cow was artificially inseminated and is bellowing out. That's a form of auditory pleasure, right? Or if they really like to just see the blood and the gore and everything. What that, um, that's their, they're kind of sterilizing the udders with, with a, a flame. That's what happens in the industry? That, yeah, that's, that's in the dairy industry. And of course, this footage is, has been obtained undercover. They're not, they're not publishing this footage, of course, like, for people to, to just see. 
Okay. But, yeah, I appreciate your stopping okay, by. Okay, Haz. Um, and I appreciate your open-mindedness toward the subject, and I think that you're going in the right direction. I don't want you to stop at being vegetarian, but if being vegetarian is part of the way for you to go vegan, um, I'm not going to celebrate it, but but I will, I will view that as like a, an arrow pointing in the right direction, definitely. Okay. As long as you're not consuming more of the cheese and eggs and that kind of thing to make up for the absence of the flesh, that's that's an important part of it. One of my favorite uh, meals of the day, in fact, it is the most, it is my favorite, is the breakfast. And I just... Um, yeah. Potatoes, mash up some tofu, green beans, I like eggs. toast. That's my... That's what I, that's what have I have you ever heard of Just Egg? No. Okay, you can get that at the store, and it's it's in a bottle. It it scrambles up just like just like an egg, Just Egg. So maybe that would that would be something to try. Also, you can just mash up tofu like a scrambled tofu. Kind of thing. Just get extra firm tofu and just just smash it up with a fork on a frying pan. Put some soy sauce on it. It's good. Um, it's good. Yeah, marinara or something next to some bread. I'm sorry. Okay, could you remind yeah. me of your name? Norman. Norman. Okay, cool. It has. Yeah, yeah. Your memory's better than mine. Look at that. Oh, well, I lucked out. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, happy Sunday, Norman. Okay. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping.